Today, we're gonna take some magnets and see what happens when we freeze them. Will they get stronger or weaker? Today, we're playing with magnets. How do they work? And we've got some fun experiments. A while ago, we used our foundry and an arc furnace and a few other things to just heat up magnets and see what it did to them. And pretty much across the board, it ruined them. Yes, it does. They lost their magnetism and it did not come back. Like, it would get heated up and then they'd just be chunks of non-magnetic ceramic after that point. So today, we're gonna try the opposite. We've got a lot of liquid nitrogen and we've got quite a few magnets. And we wanna play around with them and see what results we get. Here's the basic idea. In a previous video, we experimented with heating up and melting magnets to see how they changed. Today, we're gonna do the opposite and see what happens to them when we freeze them. Will they become more powerful or will they lose all their magnetism like they do when you heat them up? Now, you were uh, showing me this earlier. You have a pound of copper. One pound, 99.9% .9 copper. Something fun happens with copper and magnets. Now, copper itself is not magnetic. It's not going to stick to other metals, but because of how well it conducts electricity, it does create what are called eddy currents in the presence of a moving magnet. The idea is that when the magnet rapidly moves near the copper, it creates electromagnetic waves around the copper itself, and those waves interact with the static magnet. And so, without even touching the copper, I'm able to interact with it. I think probably the most famous demonstration of these eddy currents is if you take a cylindrical magnet or a spherical magnet, ugh, much like this one, and you drop it down a metal tube, specifically aluminum or copper work really well. So. This is just an oversized roll of foil, but that's all you need. There's nothing tricky about this, just a cardboard tube surrounded by aluminum, and this is our magnet. It's a fairly powerful magnet. Here's how long it takes for this magnet to fall this distance when it's not in the aluminum tube. It's just falling. There, there's no resistance. It takes less than a second. Boom. Done. However, when it is going through the tube, as the magnet moves near the aluminum, it's creating those eddy currents all the way around it. So those eddy currents are reacting to our permanent magnet and they're kind of pushing against it. The fun result is that as we drop this down, Eight. that took like seven seconds <laughs> to fall. Three, you... two, one, go. Five point four seconds. Five point four seconds. Let's do it again, just to make sure we got pretty similar times. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Five point seven three. So we're getting about five and a half seconds mm -hmm. to follow the whole length of this tube. That's pretty fun. Nighthawk and Light has a great video about magnets and eddy currents, and I got this idea from him. So thank you, Nighthawk and Light. Great stuff, as always. Our copper block is highly resistant. This is how it normally hits something. It's a heavy magnet, guys. It thunks against stuff. With the copper... So we've got the eddy currents with the copper brick. Those are awesome. Dropping the cylinder down this tube is fantastic. I want to do an actual test. And I'm going to use a stainless steel refrigerator. And I'm going to put this magnet up against it. And I'm going to see how many sheets of paper it can hold itself up through. All right, I've got a whole bunch of paper right here, and right now the magnet is definitely attracted to, we ended up using a dishwasher, not a refrigerator, but it's attracted to it, but it doesn't hold itself up. Yeah, it's so, staying there, but... So I want to see how many sheets of paper it can hold itself in place through. So I'm just going to take a few off and then put it on until it stays there without moving. Ooh, 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 we're close. This is the number of papers I got. It's not a 100% test because this isn't like a 100% guaranteed thing. I also discovered that on one piece of paper, it slid on one side, but when I turned the paper around, <laughs> it didn't slide. So friction obviously matters here, but if we can get even like a portion of a stack more after we've frozen the magnet, then we will know that we do have a much higher strength. Conversely, of course, if once it's cold, it can't stick and just slides until I have taken off, you know, a lot more of the papers will know that the cooling it down is weakening the magnet. All right, we've got our cup of liquid nitrogen here, and we're gonna start by just freezing one of our cylinder magnets, do some of those same tests. We're gonna see what it does against the copper. We're going to see what it does in our aluminum foil tube, and then we'll move on. One magnet into liquid nitrogen. 
It's very angry about this. It's escaping. It's a large amount of thermal mass into the liquid nitrogen, so of course it's boiling a lot. It's very excited. Do you guys ever just randomly find YouTubers in your house or your studio? After the magnet, I think we're going to try cooling down this entire block of copper. That's going to take even more. Oh, speaking of, it just stopped bubbling, and I think that means we're there. First test, is it even going to stick to anything right now? This is our little piece of hanger wire mm -hmm. on a string, so I'm going to try and pull this out of the cup with our little string here. Sticky! Hey, it's stuck. Well, magnetized. Yeah, that kind of stuck. All right, we're going to swing it at our copper block. You want to hold our copper block in place? Copper block held. Okay, still. That seems to be working at least as well. Mm -hmm. And it looks cooler because it's got all the vapor trailing. Yeah, off of that's it. what I was trying to do before is like get that ah. little plume. Just gonna toss it back in the liquid nitrogen for a few seconds to cool back down. And then we're trying our aluminum foil again. Let's see. Three, two, one, go. There you go. So we have extended the falling time by, by about 20%, maybe yeah. a little more about than 20%. About a second and a half almost. Yeah. So that indicates that we definitely have something changed here, probably a stronger magnet. That is fun. Neat. All right, so something that I wanna test is the repelling power of these magnets against each other. So if you guys ever had one of these magnetic toys uh, growing up where you had these little magnetic rings and they would float on a stick. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. This isn't attached to anything. This is just the repelling power of these two. Can you actually push it all the way down? You can, but it's really yeah, difficult. It doesn't like you it. You didn't really, yeah, touch I don't it. think it actually touched. It didn't. So we will measure what the difference is between now and once it's back to room temperature. All right, so that's where the magnet is hovering. <laughs> also see if we can push it all the way down with less force, because right now, that is a struggle. <sighs> Maybe I got it to touch there. I'm not positive. <laughs> Oh, I did want to try cooling down our entire copper ingot. So this is probably going to take a good amount of liquid nitrogen. I'm just going to toss this in right here and we'll add more liquid nitrogen to it. We're not testing like extremely precisely the difference with like the swinging and the copper. We're just seeing if it looks like it's doing anything noticeably different. It's like a little fountain. We've got our block of copper, which is now like 300 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Like before, <laughs> it would stop like a millimeter away. Yeah. Now it's stopping like a centimeter away. Nice. And to be clear, the eddy currents are stopping it, but it will touch the copper. It's oh, not against yeah. touching it's, the copper. It's because it's moving yes. that it won't get there. It's kind of like cornstarch and water. If you try and move through it quickly, it stops you. If you go slowly, it can come into full contact with it. It's because it's swinging at it that it's stopping it. Gosh, that is crazy. How's your finger? Hold it in place. What? <laughs> did you drop the aluminum all the way in? I did. <laughs> you know, I've had better ideas. It hit me A in few. the face. So, where's the tongs? I can get it. Sure. The goal was not for uh -huh. me to put it in and have it shock it and excite the liquid nitrogen so much that it hit me in the face. Mm -hmm. All right, I've done what Grant did just on accident. I've now had liquid nitrogen all over my face. Gotta get this nice and cold, so in we go. Three, two, one, go. Just watch it never comes out. Oh my gosh. I was kind of kidding, oh but. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're at 15, almost 15 seconds now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is it st oh. <laughs> 20 seconds. Oh my gosh, just watching it, it's just like. It gets so slow in the middle there. I don't really feel like we need a second stopwatch test on that. No, it goes real, <laughs> real slow. Cold magnet, a little bit slower. Cold aluminum tube, way slower. Awesome. Like massively different. So I know I drew this arrow to give myself proper orientation. This is all of the papers that it was able to attract to the dishwasher through And last it was still kind of slippy. Here goes. Oh, wow. <laughs> that like pulled itself out of my hands 
to stick to the papers there. Okay, I think it can take a few more. Oh, definitely still going. I think we've we hit did. threshold. We did. Okay. Let's do a few more. <laughs> Something. I, maybe it's starting to warm up too much. I'm gonna take off a bunch. All right. Yes, it's warming up. So I think it is warming up, but we had this much. So here is the difference. This is what we originally had, and this is what we had with our freezing cold magnet. Like that's an additional like 50% strength. That's amazing. Like yeah. that is one and a half times as many sheets of paper. That is crazy stronger. You ruin a magnet with heat, but boy, cold, other cold direction. Cold stuff. So here's our lines from before. Ooh, it's pretty similar about actually. It's a little lower, but not much. Okay, so it affects the attraction. The repulsion that we're seeing isn't as strong as the change in attraction, but. Okay, well I can do that one-handed much easier. Well. Mm, it's, it's hard Bump to tell, okay. hard to tell. It is slightly lower, but it is not nearly the same as the difference as the attraction that we saw. So, can you make a magnet stronger with cold? Absolutely. <laughs> it's gonna be a temporary change. Once it warms back up, I think you lose all the extra strength. The magnet block going through pieces of paper mm -hmm. held like 50% more pieces of paper. Dropping it down with the eddy currents, that was a huge change. Was amazing. And then the copper block, which we got that idea from Nighthawk and Light, that was fun because we cooled this copper block down it stopped the magnet like it didn't get like a millimeter away it barely got a centimeter away before it just slammed to a stop such a cool result to see guys anything else you want to see us do with our new neodymium magnet because we have one and it's awesome maybe it will stay unbroken until another video i'm not touching i'm not I'm, I'm done i'm done guys that's not all you know we've always got more for you to see click that box up the top to check out our most recent video and we'll see you in the next one talk to you then